Charles Schwartzell, thank you so much for being with me on Match Play today. My well, pleasure. Nice been to wanting be. to get with you for a couple of years now, and I'm glad we had a chance to get together. Thank you so much. No, nice to be on the show. Charles, it's said that you have one of the most beautiful swings in the world. Is that true? Oh, that's a great compliment. Uh, you know, I've, uh, my, 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 dad, my dad taught me sort of my golf swing, you know, he, he always kept it very simple and had, had basics that he, that he believed in, I suppose. And, uh, mm -hmm. um, you know, and I think I was pretty blessed in that sense that he, you know, that he, that he taught me that and, and carried it over. Growing up in South Africa, of course, um, you had some great examples for golf. Of course, the legendary Gary Player, and then, of course, obviously, uh, Nick Price, uh, Ernie Els. Do you see yourself carrying that baton on in that South African great tradition of players as a major winner yourself? Well, I mean, we're sure going to try. Uh, you know, those are, those are very big footsteps to, to follow. And uh, Gary, Gary, you know, he's won, you know, so many golf tournaments, over, mm -hmm. over 150 or something like that. And, uh, you know, Ernie's also up in the 70s. Um, when you were growing up, did you, you know, look to Ernie Els? Did you look to Nick Price? Did you look to Gary Player? Which one of, were your idols growing up? Well, Gary was a long way before my time, you know. I, ne I, n I never saw him hit a golf shot in his prime. Really? So, of course. the guys that I looked up to was, was Ernie, Nick Price, and Retief. Mm -hmm. Retief Goosen, of course. Retief Goosen, you know. So, those are the three guys that were my, my idols growing up. And, you know, you always, you always try and copy the things your idols do. And, uh, At age 18, you went on the European tour. I believe at the time you were either the youngest or almost the youngest player to ever get your tour card on the European tour. What was yeah. that like for you right then? Um, well, it was, to be honest, I, when I did it, I didn't actually knew what I was doing. <laughs> you know, I mean, I, it, it all happened so quickly. I went through to us to all three stages of tour school in Europe and, uh, um, I still remember in the final, the final uh, stage, through through the fourth round. If you make the cut through the fourth round or something, you uh, you automatically get a full exemption on the challenge tour. Manager came up to me and says, "Oh, you've got a full exemption." Oh, I was overwhelmed. Yeah, I thought it was great, and <laughs> carried on the next two rounds and played really well and got my full card. You yeah. know, so I, so I didn't. I think at that stage I wasn't actually even sure what what I have achieved. I uh -huh. mean, you know, I was just playing the game. Um, well, yeah, you're all of 29 years hands. old now. So at 29, you've been out, you're actually a veteran now because you've been out about 11 years. <laughs> and you've won nine times on the European tour. Um, aside from the Masters, because I want to talk about that in a minute very quickly, what, what do you think your, your best or maybe your most memorable win near and dear to your heart on the European tour was? Well, I think the first one is always, um, well, it's, it's a win you'll always remember. I mean, the breakthrough one and, you know, doing it on, on pretty much my favorite golf course um, that, I, that I like to play on uh, down in South Africa at Leopard Creek uh, mm -hmm. in front of my home crowds. And, you know, the, I think something like that will, will always, always stick. Masters, uh, you followed in some fantastic footsteps. Did you know standing on the 15th tee with 15, 16, 17, and 18. Did you have any sense that you would birdie all four holes to win that tournament? Well, if I could predict the future, I think I'll be a very rich man. Understand, but what were you <laughs> thinking on 15? Was it something that just clicked oh, in no, you? I figured. Did you have a chat with your caddy? What happened, Charles? Um, you know, I think with the, with the magic start I had, um, and then making all the pars in a row, you know, sort of steadied the boat and uh, I was playing in a way pressure-free golf and um, standing on 15th tee, I, I actually said uh, to Greg, my caddy, I said, you know, we've got a chance here if we can, I figured making two birdies, you know, we'll, 
for a very decent chance. You get the playoff. And you know, as it, as it was, they would have been in a playoff. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and, and people talk about the four birdies, but for me, the 15th hole was probably the easiest birdie, but to me the most important one. Because that broke those string of pars that I made. Um, you know, at a, from the from the fifth hole all the way to the 14th, we all all pars. You know, and uh, all right. So three in a row. Now take me on the 18th tee. Now you've had well, three in a row. Now what are you thinking? Well, I think the 18th tee. You know, those first three birdies. You know, they sort of came on a roll, and um, I think for the first time I, that I got really nervous was the 18th tee box. Mm -hmm. Jose, all of a sudden, I'm standing with a one-shot lead, and I think any golfer is that that's your dream to stand at Augusta on the 18th hole with with a one-shot lead and um, you know and, and that sort of reality vaguely set in um, and you and, and and that made me nervous you know that all of a sudden I had to compose myself really well to what did you do to execute. do that what, what well, so that our listeners can understand <laughs> maybe for their club championship or just playing with their friends what did Charles Schwartzell do to calm yourself or to gain your composure, knowing how nervous you were at that moment. Well, I think I think that's where we as professionals um, got a little bit of advantage over over amateurs, is because we we are very set on uh, pre-shot routines. Pre-shot. Yeah, to do the same thing over and over, you know, and and, and it's at those crucial stages uh, that that those sort of things help you to execute the golf shot. Paul and Casey said one time, don't forget to breathe. Well, you know, that's it's very true, you know, but it's I think I think with the also the experience that I had of winning at that stage already nine nine, nine tournaments or yeah. ten tournaments it yeah. was uh, you know you, you sort of lean back on on it um, to uh, to help you um, you know, to help you execute those those, mm -hmm. those golf shots, uh, you know, they definitely definitely played a role. Of the four majors, was the Masters the one that you would have wanted to win, if only one? Without a doubt. Really? And I don't care what anyone else is, I think they're all that giddy with me. <laughs> <laughs> so not the Open, the Masters. I, I think the Masters is the most recognizable tournament in the world, yeah. in, my, in my eyes. I, people will, will argue with me a long way, but I'm guessing I'm right. And you'll be playing in the Masters for as long as you want to, because you have a green jacket. It's and what was your dinner that you had the next year? Well, I had a pretty much a South African, uh, in a way, a tradition, you know, of just you guys call it a barbecue, you know, uh, having all sorts of variety of meats and, uh -huh. um, you know, my whole idea, I actually wanted to cook it myself. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, was, I was up Do you it. like to cook? Well, I like to barbecue, you know, you're not going to find me in the kitchen. Okay. But, but outside, I'm, uh, I can handle myself. Very good. And, uh, what do you like to do, Charles, when you're not playing golf? What's one of your favorite things, if activities, off course? Um, I love flying. I fly fixed wing airplanes, I fly helicopters. Um, I, uh, I breed with animals um, on, 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 on the farms, mm -hmm. um, water skiing. Uh, are you breeding horses or are you breeding no, livestock? No. Antelope. No. Antelope? Yeah. Wow. Got cattle and all sorts of things, you know. But, Fantastic. Uh, now, isn't your ranch. I have a lot of distractions outside of golf. Yeah, you do. <laughs> is your ranch a bit. Isn't it close to Gary Players? Uh, He's old one. Uh, uh -huh. Where he lives now, he's, he's down quite a ways. Charles Fortzell, thank you so much thank for you. being with me on Match Play. There you go. Thoroughly enjoyed it. Thanks, thank sir. you so much. Thanks, sir. Don't go away. We'll be right back after these messages. Are you an E or a C? Both have Ridgeback. These are loaded with tech. Which one are you gaming? Definitely E for me. It's just so forgiving. I'm definitely an E. C is for Cheka. What else? C is for kill it. C is me. Low spinning bombs. So, are you an E or a C? Hmm. I don't know. Hey, wait a minute. 
pound for pound, nothing comes close. We're like any normal family. We just get shorter wait times because we buy and book online at discounttire.com. So easy. Which gives us more time for things like... Oh, come on, Mom. <laughs> Ready? And it's all thanks to Kyle. <laughs> Thank you. Get 30% shorter average wait time when you buy and book online at discounttire.com. Let's get you taken care of. You've heard me talk about Squares golf shoes and how they help you hit the golf ball further. And many of you are saying, oh, come on, Faldo, give us a break. How is that possible? But yes, they do. And it's proven with science. What we noticed with the Square shoes was the shoe keeps the pressure in a more stable fashion towards the inside of the trail heel, allowing pressure to get to the lead side, generating much more club and speed and distance gain. Visit squares.com. Change your shoes, change your game. Squares, the distance golf shoe. Play with Ray Adams. Francesco Molinari, thank you so much for being with me on Match Play today. Thanks for having me. Very, very, very excited to talk to you about lots of things, but I want to start out with uh, uh, growing up in uh, Turin, Italy. You're an Italian golfer. There's some, uh, there's some great uh, golf tradition there, and you're carrying that tradition on. Tell me a little bit about uh, growing up in Turin, Italy. Well, it was obviously, you know, great for me growing up with my brother there. Eduardo? Uh, Eduardo, yeah, playing a lot of golf together as kids. When did you start? Uh, I was eight years old. Uh, you know, the rules in Italy at the time were that you could only join a golf club uh, when you were eight years old. Mm -hmm. So uh, we both joined when we were eight and, uh, you know, played since then. We, we loved the game immediately. And Who got you involved? Did your dad take you, mom and dad or friends? Yeah, or? yeah they, they're, you know, keen golfers. They were both probably seven, eight handicap and spending their weekends at the golf course. So we started going with them and uh, yeah, just got involved like that. And so the two of you grew up playing and uh, was there a, a rivalry there with Eduardo? He's, uh, I think, about two or three years older than you, right? Yeah, two years, yeah. He's yeah. 33, you're 31. Yep, uh -huh. correct. Were you uh, rivals as you went through the junior program? Yeah, yeah, you know, a little bit. Uh, <laughs> obviously, it was, it was better than me growing up because he was a little bit older, but then I, I caught up when we were probably 16 and 18 or 17 and 19. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it was, it was great for us. In Italy, there weren't that many uh, young kids playing golf, so you know, to have someone to, to train with, to practice with uh, every week, it was, I think, a big part of our development. Did your parents recognize that both of you had the talent and had the drive to do this? At what age? What, did, they, did they then take it to the next level? Or was this just a natural progression? No, yeah, I think it was more of a natural progression. I think neither of us was really thinking about uh, turning professional until we were 18, 19. Uh -huh. uh, then obviously we realized that maybe we, we had a chance, but uh, our dad uh, uh, didn't want us to, to drop out of college. So yeah. uh, we both finished our degree just in case that, you know, golf didn't work out. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, so we, we, I turned pro earlier than Eduardo. And, uh, and then he joined me a couple of years later. Uh -huh. And You know, you hear about the great programs uh, growing up in Europe, in Sweden. Um, there's obviously an incredible tradition for golf uh, in the British Isles. Uh, in Spain, of course, there's a great tradition of golf there, uh, certainly over the last several decades. You don't think about that with Italy, though, do you? No, no. Why not? Uh, well, I don't know. I guess golf is uh, not yet as popular as, as it is in other European countries. Uh, obviously, Italy is very uh, soccer, uh -huh. soccer and soccer. So football. Uh, yeah, other other sports, you know, may 
may come after that. Who did you look up to? Who were your who were your idols growing up playing golf? If not from Italy, who were they? Well, the the main guy was obviously Costantino Rocca. Of course, uh, Constantino Rocca. You know, for for us growing up in Italy, we used to watch him on TV, and uh, it was great to see an Italian player doing so well. And uh, and then you know, I, I liked a few guys. I really liked Fred Couples growing up. Sure. I followed him a lot. And uh, but yeah, Costantino was definitely the, the main inspiration for you know all the Italian. It's kids. almost 20 years ago that Constantino Rocca became almost a household name around the world at St Andrews during the British Open when he made that unbelievable putt through the Valley of Sin yeah. on the 18th green. You were only a child. I was, yeah. Think, were you uh, already? You were 13. already hitting some balls and playing a little golf then, but maybe too, too young to understand that. No, but I remember. I remember watching that. I remember uh, we were. On and the, he fell down. Remember? Yeah, yeah. In the summer, we used to go up in the in the Alps near Turin, uh -huh. and uh, I remember we were there that summer, and I remember watching the last day on on TV, and obviously, you know, great emotion when when he held the putt on 18. Then unfortunately he couldn't win the playoff, but that's been definitely one of the highest moments for Italian golf. Tell me a little bit about Eduardo. I know you mentioned that he's back home and he's uh, had a little bit of an injury. What happened to him? How's he doing? Well, yeah, he struggled actually the last two years with injuries. He had uh, two different surgeries in his in his left wrist, mm -hmm. so obviously it's not been the the best of times for him. But uh, now he's he's fit again. And uh, you know he's, he's playing well. He played well in Dubai a few weeks ago, and uh, so he's just you know practicing and Getting working back. hard, yeah, to, to get back where he was. Yeah, very very nice. He is he on a medical exemption with the tour? Uh, no, because actually in the few events that he played last year, he managed to to keep his card, so Super. he didn't need that. Yeah, very nice. The rivalry with uh, Francesco and Eduardo maybe still a little bit there? Yeah, I think it will always be there. Yeah, you know it's. <laughs> We, you know, it's just part of the way we, we were brought up. Do uh, you call each other and congratulate each other? Do you stay in close touch with each other as you're both out on tour? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we, we speak, you know, every week and obviously we're interested in knowing where each other's game is at at the moment. And, yeah. uh, you know, we just enjoy playing golf together. It's always been a, a, one of the reasons to, to work hard, you know, to, to try and beat each other. and. Uh, I'm sure it will be like that uh, all the way. Don't go away. We'll be right back after these messages. Introducing the newest addition to Zero Friction's performance arsenal. The Zero Friction Laser Pro Pistol Grip Rangefinder. The Laser Pro comes with a stable, pistol-shaped comfort grip that is lightweight with an easy-to-read scope. The device vibrates when you are zeroed in on your target and conforms with USGA and USGA handicap guidelines. Shoot on point without taking you out of the zone. Golf only exists because it's fun. What is special about golf is the relationships. Being out there with your family, your friends, so many different chances and opportunities are presented from the game of golf. Tune is brilliant. It's always first class experiences. Courses that they run, they want it to be a, a, as good as possible, and it makes a big difference for the experience. Why wouldn't you select Trim? You're selecting the best of the best. You know the quality you're getting, you know the experience you're getting. There's nobody better. How many shots do you throw away from the sand, the rough, or even the fairway? What if there was a way you could own a great short game instantly? Introducing the all new Alien Roswell Sand Wedge. 
The Alien Roswell's advanced design sole with the exclusive gravity rail system makes it nearly impossible for you to chunk it. I practice thousands and thousands of hours with my traditional sandwich, but you don't have to with the Alien Roswell. Now you can try the instant automatic answer to solving your short game by going to aliengolf.com. Augusta Ranch Golf Club in Mesa has been voted the best executive course in Arizona. Challenging for all levels of players, it's family friendly and fun. Plus, it won't take you all day to play. There's an excellent practice range with PGA professionals to help you with your game and be sure to enjoy delicious food and beverages at the Scratch Pub and Grill. Make your next tee time at Augusta Ranch Golf Club by calling 480-354-1234 or by going to Augusta Ranch Golf. Com. And now back to more match play with Ray Adams. You've played in two Ryder Cups. Tell me about the Ryder Cup experience for an Italian uh, to be able to be in the Ryder Cup and then your experience playing for your team uh, for, for, your, for Europe twice. Yeah, well, it's, you know, the Ryder Cup. I think any, any kid uh, that plays golf dreams of, of being part of that. And uh, I mean, the, the first one in ways was, uh, was special because Eduardo was there. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we were both rookies. We got to play together in the, in the doubles and uh, our family was there. So it was a, a really amazing experience, and obviously we we did well enough to to win in the end. So that was great. Mm -hmm. So in Medina it was very different for me, but obviously you know another great experience. And uh, another Medina good was a very different experience for everybody because you know the heartbreak yeah. of that loss for the American team. Yeah. Um, and of course the exuberance and the pride. Uh, for your European win, yeah, because of Olathebel, and because of Severiano Ballesteros. Yeah, talk about some of the inside locker room conversations among the Europeans during that Ryder Cup, uh, remembering Sevi. Well, it was obviously very emotional for everyone. Uh, he we, was the 13th man. Yeah, we had pictures of him in the in the locker, and obviously we had his his logo on the on the shirt on Sunday and uh, you know Lazabal uh, I mean Ballesteros for Lazabal was like a, a brother so uh, he probably knew him better than anyone else and uh, you know he told a story about about their Ryder Cup experience all week and uh, it was just a you know a great motivation to to try and, and win it. When you were in that position on Sunday morning and knew what you had to do and it was overwhelming. Did you have any idea? Well, you know, I think that the Saturday afternoon was very important for us, the yes. way the, the yes. matches finished on, on Saturday afternoon. Uh, you know, we knew it was nearly impossible, but there was still, you know, half a chance. And uh, everyone on the team was determined to, to give uh, everything they had to try and make it possible. And, you know, we had obviously uh, the right luck on our side that day and uh, everything came off perfectly. Why do you think that you Europeans figured out 20 years ago how to beat the American Ryder Cup teams? What, what do you think happened there? I don't know, you know, I've just been part of the, of the last two and, uh, you know, obviously I can't say anything about the, the US team, but I know that uh, in the European locker, there's a, there's a great atmosphere and, you know, we, we all get along very well and uh, we try to, to help each other in, in any way that we can to, to do well and to, and to win. Ryder Cup this year? Well, I, yeah, I hope to be there, you know, three in a row would be a, a great achievement. Like Costantino, he played three, so, you know, I'm, I'm working hard to, to be there mm -hmm. and uh, we'll see. Tell me about your game right now, Francesco. What are you working on in your game now? Uh, is, there, is there any weakness or any slight uh, issue that you're working on? What's uh, happening with the swing in the game right now? The, the swing is, is fine. I'm, I'm swinging very well and you know, I'm happy where, where the game is at at the moment. Uh, I've been struggling on the greens a little bit the last few weeks, so mm -hmm. that's going to be the, the focus this week. Obviously, match play is very important to, to hold paths at the right time. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's, that's going to be my focus for the week. How did you uh, meet your wife? 
we met through through friends at university. Really? Uh, yeah, she's from Turin as well, and uh, actually my best friend and her best friend were dating. So we just your best friend was dating the your wife. Yeah, yeah. And through friends, you got to know her because of him. Yeah, yeah. And you took one look and said. <laughs> no, no, no. It wasn't like that, but. <laughs> We, we knew each other. Well, how was it? <laughs> well, we, we knew we've been knowing each other for, for a few years and, uh, you know, I guess we, we just liked each other sure. since the beginning and after a few years we started dating. So she had to break uh, up with your best friend? No, 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 no. She was dating, her best friend was dating my best friend. Oh, her best so, yeah, friend. I'm yeah, sorry, yeah. I thought she was. And I couldn't steal a girlfriend from my <laughs> best friend. <laughs> I thought she was. Okay. <laughs> very nice, very nice. Perfect. And of course you have the baby? Yeah, three-year-old boy who is growing up quickly and uh, keeping us busy. Does he have a little uh, putter, maybe? Uh, he's got one, he's not used it yet, but you know, we're just waiting for when he'll be sure. ready to do it. But he's starting to be curious about what daddy does all day and uh, yeah. where I go, and so I guess he'll probably start soon. Now in Europe, uh, will you travel with the family as well? Uh, yeah, sometimes they, they travel along with me. Obviously, my son is, is free now, so he started preschool and, uh, you know, it's, it's getting a bit harder to, to travel because he likes to, to spend time with his friends at home. So. You have the minivan that you're driving all over Europe in? <laughs> no, no, Not we, the we fly. Car, no, 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 no. You're flying. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm teasing you. Yeah. <laughs> Eduardo is back home and we want to keep him in our thoughts. Yeah. And he's uh, playing a lot of good golf now, though, and he's yeah. feeling a lot better and Francesco Molinari. Thank, thank you, you so much for being with me on Match Play. Thanks a lot, thank Appreciate you. Appreciate it very much. Thanks. Ray Adams' wardrobe is provided by GMAC by Cartel. I think it's important to start your day by getting your energy flowing and your body ready. That's great, but some days I need more. If you want to be great at something, it takes hard work and focus. Other times, I want more. There's nothing better than finding time to slow down for a meal with family and friends. Is there a chance of even more? It's absolutely amazing when you can sit around a fire to finish off the day. I'm so glad I found a place for all my mores. Quality products at a fair price. Are you an E or a C? Both have Ridgeback. These are loaded with tech. Which one are you gaming? Definitely E for me. It's just so forgiving. I'm definitely an E. C is for Cheka. What else? C is for kill it. C is me. Low spinning bombs. So. Are you an E or a C? Hmm, I don't know. Hey, wait a minute. Pound for pound, nothing comes close.